Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine, and I'm going to give you another Wirecast tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about recording to another source. So, you are running Wirecast, which is great. I run Wirecast, and I, I, there's a little tip I have for you right now, and that is when you get a copy of Wirecast, your copy of Wirecast actually works on two devices. So, I can put it on my desktop and I can put it on my MacBook. Perfect for when I go out on the road. So, I have a machine that will let me uh, record multiple cameras and stuff like that on the road, and then a machine with a little bit more power so I can do some more uh, at home type stuff and, and really push it out. But, there are ways that you can do this that you can do this so you don't have to use all your resources on one machine and it, the more that you do the more layering you do the more titles that you do the more of everything you do the more process it takes and the hotter your computer gets and the more wattage it uses and next thing you know you know you might overuse your computer or something like that or the resource monitor may be shooting up over uh, crazy right now like right now i'm running at about 52-53%. When I start to introduce the desktop from the MacBook, it will actually jump up to about 70%. And if I do anything else, like bring in other videos and stuff like that, it'll it'll basically 90 to 100 percent out. And this is a multi-core computer. I mean, this is not this is this is a pretty fast computer with a really good video card in it. So I want to kind of even out the resources. That's where this comes in. Uh, recording from un to another device and there's many different ways to do that the first way I'm going to show you is through Wirecast now let's take a look at it first of all this is uh, you see Wirecast here but you see this from my MacBook Pro this is my Wirecast from my PC as you can see I've got all the scenes set up all everything uh, here and going from there so and of course if you don't have Wirecast you can get Wirecast. Simply go to j.mp forward slash Wirecast 6. It's a bit, bit.ly link. j.mp forward slash Wirecast 6. Of course, that's also an affiliate link for me. Uh, thank you very much for doing that. If you don't have Wirecast 6, uh, you can get that now. Or if you want to leave a tip for me, that's paypal.me forward slash Jeff Powers. Paypal.me forward slash Jeff Powers. So anyway, let's move back here. We're on my machine. Now this is the MacBook. Now there's only, as you can see on the MacBook, and I'm going to turn this off for a second, there's only one scene on this MacBook, and that is my Intensity Pro. So basically what I do is I have this machine going to the MacBook Pro. I use this because I use two monitors on my computer. This is the third monitor, and there's many different ways to set up a third monitor. I'm using a DisplayLink uh, connector. It's a USB connector. Um, and I'm showing this to you because you can get as simple as this. This runs USB 2.0, uh, or you could go 3.0, or you could get one with the display port option, hook it up to the display port, and go from there. It runs DVI to an HDMI cable. Simple as that. That HDMI cable and display link then goes to my Blackmagic Intensity Pro. This is what I use to run camera off of my MacBook Pro. And I've been doing that for years now. So now I've got this link from the, the, the desktop to the MacBook. And this is how I make that link happen. Once I go here, I go to the output, and I go to external display output. Now, as you can see, I have three options. I have off, I have display 2, and display 3. Display 2 is my secondary display. And if I, and if I choose that, you're going to see... Uh, well, you won't see it, but my secondary display just uh, showed the the uh, what I'm seeing on the wire on the main wirecast. But if I do external display output and I choose display three, now it goes to my MacBook Pro. Switch over to the MacBook Pro. If I choose Intensity Pro here, there you go. You're seeing what I'm seeing, which is basically the screen. And unfortunately, it can't really pop off of it. But what I can do is this. I can put this on, and now you can see me talk. There's a little bit of a uh, delay because it's pushing over to the MacBook, and then, and then of course, the uh, desktop presenter is pushing it back over to, uh, to the PC. So now I, act, I have both instances of Wirecast running. The cool thing about it is this MacBook Pro is running as one layer. Whereas the PC is running multiple layers, that being the lower third, the, the little Geekazine bug I have over there, my, my intros, anything like that. If I bring in guests or anything like that, it shows here. 
but then it kind of gets all squished down, goes through the HDMI cable to the, the Intensity Pro into the MacBook as a single layer. What does that mean? That means that the CPU on this MacBook Pro is going to be very low. So I can then turn around and I can record this at a higher, a higher rate, such as a high 720 or a low 1080p. Keep in mind, this is an older 2011 MacBook Pro. It is an i7, and it does have the AMD graphics on it, uh, which I think it's the 4950 graphics. And But, you know, you, you do want to understand that, you know, when you record to a MacBook Pro, um, or any laptop for that matter, uh, the graphics might not be as powerful as on a desktop. But you could actually put this onto two desktops and then use one desktop that basically does your recording and your streaming. And then the other desktop that does nothing but controls the switch from going from me to your guests, to your lower thirds, to your titles and everything like that. And then all this does is, is, is basically a dummy machine that moves from there. And that's what's really cool about it because I actually did some tests right now. I'm looking at the speed uh, and the heat coming from my main computer, and it gets pretty hot. And uh, w one time I actually was recording a video of a video game, and I was trying to do it on heat. I was trying to do it all on one computer, and it just got so hot my computer overheated and turned off. And so, I, needless to say, I didn't get the video. The bottom line is by pooling these resources now. Uh, right now, it's recording about 50%. If I actually had a guest on or something like that, I would. Uh, I, this would be like 70 or 80%. In fact, as I just switched it over, it switched to 70 to 80%. By not hitting the record button here and hitting the record button here, this one is at a CPU cycle of about 40 to 50%. This is at about 40 50%. Everything's cool, and it, it moves from there. Now, you don't have to go Wirecast to Wirecast. You can go to other programs, and, and I'll talk about that in a second. One thing I do have to mention is how you retrieve your audio. Now, if you retrieve your audio that straight from the PC, it should line up properly into this other Wirecast. I don't do that. I actually pull my audio straight from the board. That way, if there's any problems, there's no interruptions, and if, and if anything, I got audio as one straight track, and I can use that to align everything. However, by doing it that way, there is a bit of an offset from the video and audio, which is not a big deal because I actually post-edit everything that I put out. So that just means I have to go into an, a video editor and kind of nudge things together. One thing you have to note on that is... Um, Wirecast works on a uh, on a, a, a frame rate that switches, goes back and forth, goes from uh, goes from 30 frames a second to 21 frames a second to 10 frames a second to 5 frames a second, and it really all depends. Like if I sat here very still and I did my, uh, my ventriloquism here, I could go down to like the 20, 20, 15 frames, and then when I start moving, I'll I'll go back up to 30 frames. The idea is that when in some editors, it won't see that variableness. And so you try to put it all together, and then you, you, uh, you render it, and then all of a sudden you find that the audio is still going while the video is already done. Certain programs understand how that works and works from there. So make sure that your video editor understands how that all works. Another way you can do it is kind of put it all together and just kind of push it. But, you know, that confuses things. But the whole point is that you have to line those up, make sure that you can you have an editor that will do that and go from there. All right. There are other ways to do this. You don't have to go Wirecast to Wirecast, and that's the coolest thing about here. I'm going to quit Wirecast, and I'm going to go into another program, which uh, it, it's uh, basically uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm also going to show you this right here. This is the Atomus Ninja 2. What this is is a recorder. It's it's a disk based recorder. So I have these disks. This is an SSD drive, but you can you can put in a laptop hard drive, um, which I've done before, and it records at ProRes. So a ProRes video, as opposed to an MP4, will record at a higher bit rate. So if you're doing a let's say you do a 15 minute video and it's only like uh, 200, 300 megabytes on Wirecast, it will be about 
four or five times more on here. You definitely have to edit it down and go from there. Uh, they have four settings for ProRes, and then uh, I think a fifth one that you can actually get a license for to use. But basically, you slip in the hard drive, you, you turn it on, uh, you put in the uh, HDMI cable, and then you record, go from there. I have found some problems with it, though, because... Uh, when I switched back and forth between, uh, on one of my videos I did, I switched back and forth between the desktop mode and the regular mode. For some reason, it had a problem with that, and it stopped working properly. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but uh, nonetheless, that, that might be a small issue with that. But the other cool thing is, within the next year or two, um, this is just one, this is more of a pro solution. There are other and I know three companies that are working on devices that are are just as big as this, and they're going to be under four hundred dollars. Some might even be under two hundred dollars. So you can record video onto a box because they understand this is the revolution that's happening right now, and it's a great time to do that. So, but anyway, so another way to do it if you have a program that does do capture. Now, another program that uh, that you can get on your Mac is an absolutely free program, and it is called, um, and I'm blanking on the name as I'm doing this live, uh, it is called Cam Twist. That's right. Uh, Cam Twist is a program absolutely free. You can download it, and it also does very similar to what Wire Wirecast does. It'll let you do some layers. It'll let you do some picture-in-picture -picture stuff. Uh, but Wirecast has more of a structure to it. and uh, But you can actually push it to Cam Twist and use Cam Twist to record. Uh, it won't let you stream out. Uh, Cam Twist won't. Uh, so if you did do that, you'd have to do other on, on something else to do it. Uh, Boink Software is another one. It'll be able to capture it and record it. It won't be able to stream it out. And here's a third one. If you have, I have Adobe uh, Premiere Pro. Now this is an older version of Adobe Premiere Pro. This is 5.5. Still can be done. Might be slightly different from version to version. So basically I'll just go up to File and I'll go over to Capture. And then I'll, I'll have this Capture device. And uh, let me get rid of this box right here. In fact, I'll flip it over to me. How's it going? So basically with this Capture device, I can now capture the video. And how I do this is I'll have to go over to Settings. As you can see, the capture format is trying to do an HDV format. That's usually a FireWire type camera. We want it to go through the Black Magic Intensity Pro card. So we'll choose Edit. And it's thinking for a couple seconds here. As it's done, it will uh, it will come up and I will be able to choose the Black Magic card. There we go. So I choose it from HDV to Black Magic Capture. I go into the settings. Now I have to know what the monitor is, uh, the monitor resolution is, so I can match it here. And that's the same thing with Wirecast. So I know that this third monitor is running uh, a 1080p at 30 frames a second, so I'll do that. Video format is an uncompressed 8-bit 4x2x2. That is a ProRes type uh, uh, video. Uh, it's two stereo channels, 16-bit 48. That's fine. So I'll choose OK, and I'll choose OK. And there we go. Now I can hit record on this, and I can actually capture the video through here as opposed to my main desktop. And that's what's pretty cool about this is I'm saving all my resources. I'm getting the best video possible and recording it, possibly not streaming it. But once again, I'm taking the, the audios directly from the board rather than through Wirecast to the device and uh, that'll help me control a lot of a uh, lot of factors um, if I need to control that. And then, of course, uh, once I'm done, I can put it right into Premiere Pro and I can reline up the uh, audio with the video and then uh, push it out in a popular uh, HD format or an SD format if I need to and then uh, and then be done with it and go from there. Simple as that. It's 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 pretty actually pretty cool. Uh, if to be able to do all of this and get as best of video as possible, because when I record and I and I just record off the PC, sometimes you'll get those skips. Sometimes you'll see the stutters. It'll be like that, 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 that. I'm moving in, in regular motion, but it's like in a jittery format, like this or something like that. Sometimes you'll hear and then I'll keep talking um, because it's it's sucked up all the resource from the recording. It, it just doesn't know where to go, what to do. 
And so it just kind of freezes for a second. And by doing this, we're keeping the resources low on multiple uh, machines so we can record from there. Or we can record to here or another device. It really depends on the situation. And, uh, you know, if you use Wirecast, you can then use that to stream out from the secondary device and record on your, on your primary or use an HDMI splitter. And then I could actually record on this, and I could use that to stream out to another one. Uh, the possibilities are endless, but the bottom line is you get the best video possible. That's the key right there. So anyway, hopefully this will be, uh, this is self-explanatory. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, Jeffrey Powers at Geekazine, Think Magazine, put in a geek and go from there. Once again, if you want to get a copy of Wirecast, go to j.mp forward slash Wirecast 6, j.mp forward slash Wirecast 6. And then, of course, if you want to leave a tip, that's over at paypal.me forward slash Jeff Powers. This has been another Wirecast tutorial uh, talking about how you can record to another source. Until next time, you guys geek out. <laughs>